What's up, y'all? J.R. Riemann back again, coming to you from Bowler X Pro Shop and Training Center inside Waterford Lanes. Uh, and today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about making moves, making adjustments on the lanes. This could be a fairly long video because I'm going to try to break this down for you and make you understand why we're doing things the way we're doing them. So just kind of bear with me. Uh, this could be educational or you could completely think I'm an idiot. It's up to you. You can figure it out for yourself. But here we go. I'm going to share my screen here. We're going to add this. Uh, we take a look at this. Let me uh, get back over here. So when it comes to making moves on the lanes, everybody's always kind of been taught, right? As your ball goes a little bit high, you move your feet to the left as a right-hander opposite for left-handers. Basically through this video, whatever I say, I'm going to be speaking as a right-hander for left-handers. Obviously, you're doing the opposite. So just kind of pay attention to that. But for instance here, okay, so standing on the big dot, which is 20, and we're looking at 10. Pretty much what a lot of people try to do. Um, a lot of people try to do this. And what people don't realize is when we're standing further back on the approach, the angle that you're looking at, like this is actually a fairly steep angle. It looks like, I mean, it has a 20 board difference there from where you're sliding to where you're looking. But most people, when you're standing on the approach, it looks like this. It looks like it's tighter. And then when you get up to the approach, it's more like this. So just kind of keep that in mind that as you get to the bet to the to the foul line, the angle is actually going to open up some. And this is a big reason why a lot of people actually wander to the right or they drift back to the right um, is because what they see when they're standing on the approach becomes different as they move towards the foul line. They, they, they realize their, their angle is starting to get open and they're like, oh, crap, I need to kind of shut that back down. So they just kind of wander back to get the to keep that same visual that they had from the beginning of the approach. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. Um, and this is why the math is so important. If you haven't seen the rule of seven, you need to go watch that video about the rule of seven. Um, but when it comes to, okay, let's say I throw this shot and I go high and like leave a four pin or, uh, you know, four nine or even something through the face where I three, six, 10, and you want to make a move. Generally the first move in league that somebody would make would be like a two and one. But now here's the thing. If I draw this line all the way through second arrow to where it would be headed towards there. You can see that's where that's at. Now, if I draw another line, let me see with that two and one. Let me see if I can get another line up here. There we go. And let's make, uh, actually, we're going to delete that. And let's go, you know what? No, let's, let's do the second one with a with an arrow. Okay, so we're going to line this back up. So now we're going to make a two and one. So we're going to move our feet. You can see this is the second board there. But then this arrow still goes through here. But if I were to follow it straight across that second arrow, you can see how much steeper it actually becomes. It gets going further right down lane. You know what? I want to do it with the, because that arrow gets in the way. So let me try this again with this one. So I'll go back over here, just a typical two and one, sliding two boards further left. And one. Oh, and yeah. So I'm sorry. So the two, if we were to, the, the, Screw myself up already. Don't listen to that last part. So if we were to go move our feet two boards, but keep our eyes the same, that's why the angle would be changed. You can see as it crosses through that second arrow that gets further to the right. That's why we would actually make the two and one. So we go here and you can see it ends up in the same spot. So the one board, so we move our feet two to the left and then our eyes one to the left. So that way we're still trying to get the ball to the same spot because if we don't, then obviously the break point is going to be further right when you look at it at the end of the pattern here. So if I draw this all the way through, you can see it makes a cross there. It's not much, but it's enough that it changes where you're actually going. And then if you actually make a parallel, so you go two and two, it looks like kind of like that, right? I can't, I can barely see the, the actual boards down lane. So I'm trying to do the best I can here. Um, it doesn't really look parallel from there because the, the camera angle, you, you would think that it would be more parallel. So that way it would be like, you know, that to where it looks like it's straight. But that's because of the angle, because of, you know, the camera angle, it just doesn't come out properly. So parallel would be here where you're at, your break point actually gets further left now. So the times when you would use a parallel type of move is um, when you want to keep the exact same type of angle through the front part of the lane. and um, and be able to keep the same shape going through the pins, and you're just trying to get closer to the pocket. So a lot of the times I'll use a parallel move even in league 
if like say get rid of this one let's just say this shot right here ends up coming up light um and rather than making the two and one so then we would go two and one back to the right rather than making that move which would then get it to the dry faster and make it hook more uh sometimes i would opt to go two and two or one and one and go back this route now that just brings everything closer to the pocket and i can get there a little bit easier this is the type of move that we use a lot more in pba style conditions uh in tournaments like that when you're trying to keep the same similar shapes and you're just trying to get close to the pocket we use these on the longer patterns so a lot of the times you'll see where you'll have a ton of oil all the oil in the middle most of the time on a long pattern you're you're trying to stay away from the hang that's to the right there's going to be some out of bounds that's going to be over here on the right side and you're trying to stay away from that so if i can draw this is where it takes time because i'm trying to do little things there we go let's just go like this this is we'll call this the out of bounds if i can will this turn actually i just gotta go like this let me just go this way bing okay so we'll call this oh, that's probably too thick too thick there we go. i wish i could turn it why can't i turn it i wish it would like rotate but it won't let me rotate it um poopsicle why won't it let me rotate it i wish it was like that but anyway, yeah, it won't let me rotate it the way I want to. So anyway, so let's just say this is the out of bounds up over here. If you get it out past this point over here, down lane. So you don't want it to go over there, anything in the red. So if you're lined up and you get it going through here, if it gets there, it's not going to hook. So the best thing to do is to, instead of trying to go this way and go up it to where it could still hook and you're playing through all that out of bounds, the best thing to do and reason why the people move left so fast on tour is to just move left and move this to where it doesn't never get to the out of bounds so you move left on the long pattern right so then the opposite would be true on a short pattern a lot of the times we are moving way over here and trying to play straighter to get the ball further away from the pocket this way so that way then it has all this extra time this extra room to get back to the pocket because all the curve starts like right here right at the end of the pattern whereas a long pattern the curve starts back here ish somewhere on the short pattern it starts to hook up in here so you need the extra time and the space to get the ball back to the pocket so a lot of the moves are going to be parallel on the tough patterns now when you're in league if you are back at let's say uh the two and one here so we're back at second arrow. Actually, that stayed right there pretty good. Back at second arrow here. As you move, you're going to be going like this. You're going to go two and then one here. And then your next move, maybe seven, eight frames later, is going to be two and then one more. And you are getting closer to the pocket kind of, but the ball's still getting fairly to the same point. And then two and then one more right there. See how this is kind of keeping that angle the same pretty much. If we were to take and do a degree here, I bet you that degree would be fairly similar each time you moved because that's shutting back down. So that angle from the gutter to here would be fairly symbol, similar. So your, end, your angle through the front part of the lane would be somewhat similar as you keep moving to the left because you're trying to get it to the same spot. You know, so And obviously the same is true for the left side there. So And then there'll be times where... Sometimes you have to get it to the dry fast so your feet go, you know, over here. And then in order to get it to even hook enough, you've got to throw it this way. So it gets to the dry over here and then has enough time to hook. Because if you go this far left in the soup and you only get it to there, sometimes it might not make it up that hill bowling and all that oil that's in the middle of the lane. Not a strong enough ball in the world going to make it go through that pins from there. Now you don't have enough. Now the ball's waiting until it gets to the back part of the lane and doesn't have enough time to react to get back to the pocket. So that's why you'll see a lot of guys when they go left, especially on tour patterns, they'll go left and they'll throw it steeper and they'll get it going way to the right over here and trying to throw it into the dry to get it to stand up and slow down, uh, slow down, meaning starting to hook, change speed, changing um, literally it, when the ball starts to hook on the lane, the ball speed actually is starting to come down. So that's why they say slow down. So the ball's starting to hook, starting to slow down 
to get back to the pocket, make its motion. So in, it never has a chance to slow down if it's in the soup over here. So the moves are typically two to ones, three and ones. Um, sometimes you'll do one and ones and two and twos. Again, parallel moves are simply to move your angle at the same distance. So if you're just, oh, look at that. I can create a curve. I didn't know I could make this curve. Look at that. Shoot, I'd have been using that. That'd have been cool. So we could be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kind of playing around now at this point. Let's go here and we're going to, we're going to go and we're going to hit second arrow. We're going to, yeah, look at that. Boom. But sorry, but that's not going to curve there. So we'd have to go more like, like this. It's going to be straighter. And then it starts to curve in there and then bang, just a little bit more here, a little bit more belly. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There's our ball motion. I just learned something new. That's pretty sweet. There you go. Bada boom, bada bang. It's such a beautiful thing. But anyway, so we're going to be using typical, you know, moves like that. They're going to be the two to ones, the three to ones, the, yeah, one to one, one and ones, the 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 two and twos, moving your angle closer to the pocket, moving your angle further from the pocket, you know, stuff like that. So typically on a league pattern, if your ball's hooking high, just make a two and one to the left, two with your feet, one with your eyes. If the ball's hooking, uh, not if it's not hooking enough, you make a two and one to the right, two with your feet, one with your eyes, uh, and that shuts your angles down just a little bit and makes your ball uh, have a, a tighter angle through the front and can hook and stand up a little bit more uh, to get through the pocket. So. There we go. Hope this helps. I know I rambled a little bit there, but whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, hopefully you learn a little bit on these tougher patterns, the easier patterns, a little bit of moves. The moves don't have to be much. These are just feet moves. Obviously, there's other moves you can make with your hand. You're going to make hand adjustments and stuff, which we can go back to that and look. Like Clearly, um, let's go back over here. I want to kind of look at this again. With here... As you get your ball, we're starting it over here from further left. And we're getting the ball over here. Obviously, we got to get the ball to curve more, right? So in order to get the ball to make that shape, to get back to the pocket where we want, you've got to create more side roll. As you move left, the ball has to be rolling sideways. You've got to get the ball going this way. So you got to get it. It's more like you're trying to get it to roll that way. So think of your, man, I keep grabbing the wrong thing. Think of the, um, like if just a regular ball in your hand and your axis, and you're just trying to get it rather than just rolling this way, where if your end over end is rolling straight like this, and then as you turn it, you're rolling and you're turning and you're spinning the ball, you got to get it rolling more sideways this way in order to get it to complete. So think of if I, if I take a basketball in my hand, and I just toss it straight up in the air with no spin, it's gonna hit the ground and it's gonna bounce straight back up. But if I take a basketball and I spin it sideways and toss it in the air, when it hits, it's gonna bounce the direction that it's spinning. Bowling balls are the exact same ways for a lot of you who you know, ask, when do you start getting your hand around the ball and start rotating more sideways? This is where, when you start moving left or when you wanna see more overall hook, if your ball's not hooking enough, sometimes you can just rotate your hand a little bit more, get it to come off of the drive friction to the right a little bit stronger and get it to make a stronger motion. Well, I know a lot of people are trying to keep the same hand position and just make adjustments. That is impossible if you get far enough left. Now, that's why so many of you are stuck constantly wanting to stay over here as much as you possibly can. You're trying to get your ball to stay in this area and as you move left, um, and as you move left, the ball just doesn't have enough because your motion is going to stay the same. Your ball doesn't have enough, and you can see where it would finish over here. It doesn't have enough rotation to get it to finish through the pins. As you increase rotation, the more that's going to create some curve, the bell in there, the belly, and then it has a chance to get back. It's going to make more. As you decrease rotation, the amount of that curve goes down. So we increase rotation, the amount of curve goes up. We decrease rotation, the curve goes down. And you can see decreasing rotation, it, this is actually a perfect example here. You can see I have to pull it towards me to get it to go straighter. And that's because that would be the ball rolling and curving in the front part of the lane more than the back part. As you spin it sideways more, I pull it out more towards towards the pins and you can see that moves the break the curve to the back part of the lane more so 
and we're moving the ball motion towards the back part of the lane as we rotate our hand that way. So think of that. As I pull it this way, the straighter that line gets. As I pull it towards the pins, the more curved down lane that ball gets. So just really think of that. I know that was actually a really cool little demonstration there. I like that. That was neat. That was pretty pretty neato there, guys. So that's a good one for you to watch. So anyway, that's all I got for you. I just kind of wanted to kind of go through a little bit of this stuff so you guys can pay attention to some of the moves you're making, understand why you're moving left, why you're moving right, those types of things. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below because I may tag your question and make a new video answering your question for you. So give me all the questions you got and I'll try to answer them more specifically because I'm sure I didn't touch on everything that you want to know on this type of thing. If you've got questions, leave them below. And I will, uh, I will take care of those and we'll make a video on that. So until next time, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Take care. They say bowling is a dying sport. A dying sport. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. BowlerX.com for the love of bowling.